I got a message for you this morning that uh, is going to really, it, it, it's a now word, and I, I think it's something that we all need to hear. Actually, youth need to hear this message. Um, I'm going to talk this morning about honoring up, honoring down, and honoring all around. Honor is not just one of those things that you honor people that are up. But church, you need to learn to honor people at all levels of life. All people deserve honor. And you'll understand this in, in a little bit. <clears throat> but a lot of times we think of honor as just something where we honor somebody that's up and somebody that's beyond us or higher than us or or in a position greater than us, or any of those things. But church, honor is something you do um, all around. It's something you honor up, you honor down, you honor all around. And we are living in an age right now, I believe. We, we are living in more than I've ever seen in my lifetime. Um, I'm not that old. I'm, I'm going to turn 60 this year. But more than I've ever seen in my lifetime, we are living in an age of constant, never-ending offenses. There are people that are constantly offended, never-ending offenses. People are really quick to judge. People are really quick to criticize. People are really, really quick to condemn. And, uh, and I'll even say people are, are quick to just delete. They'll, they'll just delete anyone that offends them. You've offended me and I'm going to delete you out of my life. Delete them from Facebook, delete them from Twitter. But not only that, but you'll delete them right out of your life. People are really quick to do that. Am I speaking truth? Have you noticed this in our world today? <clears throat> it used to only be with people that were well-known. It used to only be where people would delete the politicians or people would delete the athletes that said something they didn't like or that... You know, people would delete the TV personalities. People would delete leaders or whatever. But unfortunately, now we're living in a time where school teachers are being deleted. School teachers. Uh, we're living in a time where coaches are being deleted. Pastors, delete. We're living in a time where mentors are being deleted. Anybody that says anything that we just don't like. We, we just, it could be the person you're working with, which is really awkward, by the way. It's really awkward. Uh, it could be a, a family member. I've got family members, not immediate family members, but from extended family and, and cousins and uncles and that um, just don't talk to any of their family anymore. I talk to them, but to them, the rest of their family is dead. It's awkward. It's sad. Here's my point. It doesn't take much in our culture today, you know, to, to have a misstatement. We've all done it. We've had misstatements. We'll say something that, you know, oops, that came out, but you can't take it back because it already came out. Um, we have misunderstandings. Um, we have some things that are very unintentional. They're, they're, it's, it's not like intentional. They're very unintentional. 
And, and some things can be said that have been very, very dumb, and they can be a poor choice of words, but the tragedy in it, to me, is it can affect friendships, it can affect family, it can affect church relationships, whatever it is. And I know family members that have actually uh, stopped speaking to other family members because of the way they voted. That's shameful. That's really sad. Um, and you see it on social media and all of that. Never ending offenses. You know, one thing that I, I want you to understand this morning is that we have to acknowledge, and this is a powerful truth if you want to um, write this down. Uh, and it's not my powerful truth. I saw this and I, I, I liked it a lot. But we have to acknowledge the truth that if you're on a continuous search to be offended, you're always going to be able to find what you're looking for. I'll say it one more time. We have to acknowledge the truth that if you are on a continuous search to be offended, to be angry, to dishonor, you will always find what you're looking for. You'll always find what you're looking for. And church, I'm just here to tell you this morning, and, and then we're going to pray and get into this word, but we're called to live by God in a different way than that in this current uh, culture that we live in. We are not called to live offended lives. We are not called to live angry lives. And we are not called to live dishonoring lives. In fact, the Lord tells us very different. In Romans chapter 12, verse number 10, in Romans chapter 12, verse number 10, it says, honor. Everyone say honor. honor. Say honor again. Honor. In fact, those that are watching online, you just put right on, on online, in the line, honor this morning. Put honor. It says, honor another above yourselves. Everyone say honor. honor. Honor another above yourselves. This word's going to really help you. This word's going to really help you. It's going to be one of those words that are going to be like, um, at the end, I think you're going to understand how this is going to really help you. It's going to help us. It's going to help me. It's going to help you. It's going to help us as a church. It's going to, I, I, I hope this, this word kind of just takes off. Because I think it could help a lot of people. Lord, we just thank you that your word's powerful. Your word's anointed. Your word is life changing. Your words impact lives and nations, and families, and individuals. Now, Lord, anoint my words. Help me communicate clearly. Help me communicate uh, this morning boldly. And help me communicate with love and compassion here this morning. And we give you thanks, we give you praise, and we give you honor, and we give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen. 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 Are you ready for the word? If you're ready, say, I'm ready. ready. Wow, you are ready. You're really ready. Okay, Mark chapter 6. Mark chapter 6. If you want to turn to this, go ahead. It will be on the big screen also, but let me give you just a little context here in what's happening here in Mark chapter 6. 
Jesus had done a couple of pretty amazing, powerful miracles, okay? Uh, he healed a woman with an issue of blood that had that issue for 12 years. Issue of blood, and, and Jesus miraculously brought healing into her life after dealing with this for 12 years. That's a pretty amazing thing. Then something even more incredible happened, and, and Jesus touched a girl that was actually dead. She'd actually been physically dead, and the power of his spoken word raised that girl from the dead. That was really powerful, really powerful. So Jesus goes to his hometown. Now, it wasn't his birthplace, but it was where he was raised. And he went to his hometown, Nazareth, and the people there were looking for the Messiah. Okay, so they're like, where is the Messiah? Where is he? And Jesus comes as the Messiah to the town where he was raised. And they looked right past him and showed him no honor. No honor. And we're going to see here, they didn't actually not even show him honor, but they did the actual opposite. And so in Mark chapter 6, verse number 1, here's what it says. Jesus left that part of the country and returned with his disciples to Nazareth, his hometown. Again, this was where he was raised. When the Sabbath came, he began teaching in the synagogue, and many heard him and were amazed. They asked, where did he get all this wisdom and the power to perform such miracles? Then the scripture says, they scoffed. Church, they scoffed. They mocked. They ridiculed. Oh, he's just a carpenter, you know. Isn't he the guy we grew up with? And then it says, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon, his sisters live right here among us. In other words, church, we know their family. We're very familiar with them. We're very familiar with their family. There's nothing special about this guy. We're familiar with this guy. We know him. And then look at what it says. They were deeply offended and they refused to believe him. Then Jesus looked at his disciples and said, a prophet is honored everywhere except in his hometown and among his relatives and his own family. Jesus was not honored in his own hometown. You know, church, I'll never forget a statement that, that Casey Treat uh, good friend of mine, a lot of you know Casey Tree, but I'll never forget a statement that Casey made one time, and I, I, I understand this. I, I thank you guys because you've always honored me, and I, I feel honored by you guys, but there tends to be times where, where you can become very familiar, and Casey always said, he said, I love traveling because when I'm traveling, he said, people come to expect miracles. But at Christian Faith Center in Seattle, Washington, he said, I'm just ordinary. I'm just normal. I'm just familiar. And people don't see the kind of miracles 
that I'll see in my other meetings. It's, it's sort of true. I sort of get it. I sort of get it. Last Sunday I was speaking at a church and, and you know, those people come really expecting. I mean, they don't know who, that I'm just a Joey. <laughs> you know, but they come expecting and, and they came ready to receive whatever it was God had for them. And yet in your own town and where you can become a little bit more familiar, it's easy to, to have the, uh, I'll call it sin, of familiarity. Because familiarity can become a, a, a stronghold. And, and so, church, what's the difference between showing honor and withholding honor? What's, what's the big difference? You know, I'm going to give you just a couple of Greek words, and it's not because I'm going to bore you with these, but the first word that I want to give you, because it's important that you, you understand, is the word uh, atimos. Atimos. And atimos means without honor. Without honor. And, and that word atimos means to dishonor. It means to treat as common. It means to treat as ordinary. It means that there's nothing special about you. There's, there's no reason to treasure you. Um, I can't really say anything necessarily great about you because I know you too well and I, I'm too familiar with you. I shouldn't expect anything really from you. You're simply ordinary and you're simply common. A timos. But church, the other word looks like the word time, but it's pronounced time. And this word means to honor. That you value, that you respect, that you highly esteem whoever that is. Okay? You highly esteem means that you treat them as precious, you treat them as weighty, you treat them as valuable. Church, what honor does, if, if you really want to know, when you really do show honor, what honor does is honor esteems. Honor cherishes, honor values, honor builds up, honor encourages, honor believes the best. But dishonor, on the other hand, it treats things as common. And it tears down and it belittles and it criticizes and it devalues and it assumes the worst Whatever it might be. You know, let's, let's for an example, take this. If, if you're a guy and you're dating a girl, it's, it's interesting when you're dating a girl and, and it's, it's new and it's fresh. It's amazing how he'll honor her. He'll even run over to the other side of the, the car and open the door for her. He'll open up not only the car door, but he'll open up most doors for her. Uh, he'll give her compliments. He'll give compliments everything. He compliments her hair. He compliments the way she walks. She compl compl he brags on her. He takes photos, photos with her and, and wants photos at dinner and he, he dates her and, and, and all that stuff. He'll even hashtag true love on his posts. And, and there's honor. And then one day they come along and they, they they have a lot of honor and a lot of cool stuff going on, and then they get married. And they settle down, and over time, they start taking one another for granted. And instead of honoring and lifting, they start treating one another as ordinary. It's really easy to start treating each other, people you become familiar with as ordinary, common. Oh, they're, or, they're 
just ordinary. They're just common. You know, church, if you want a special marriage, a God-honoring marriage, what do you do? You honor one another above yourself. I said, if you want a God-honoring marriage, a, a special marriage, you honor one another above yourself. If you want a common marriage, an ordinary marriage, you treat each other as ordinary. You treat each other as common. Hello? You know, I'll never forget Vicki and I, this is not a, a, a couple in our church. This is not a couple that you even know. This is a couple that uh, a, a couple that uh, we um, were ministry couple that we were in relationship with. And they had a great marriage. But somewhere along the way in their marriage, they, they started treating each other as, as common, and they started treating each other as ordinary. And um, they were completely dishonoring to one another. And so we were meeting with them one night and get, uh, getting together with them. And, and it was amazing how it kind of went, went both ways. But I'm telling you, she was all up in her husband's business. This lady was tearing him down in front of us. In our conversation, we saw it and she couldn't say anything positive about him or any of it. <coughs> well, Vicki, the godly quiet one here, um, can sometimes be pretty bold and prophetic. Uh, uh, prophetic, not pathetic. <laughs> prophetic. And she can be pretty bold at times. So she, she's not always bold, but she can be bold. And, and she just stopped and she said, do you realize that this whole time you've just been tearing down your husband? Do you realize that? And she said, you need to stop it. You need to stop tearing him down. Well, this lady looked at her and, and she, she said, well, you know, if my husband was one-tenth of the husband that you've got, I'd be able to show him honor. And Vicki didn't give her an inch. Let me tell you, she said, maybe my husband is the man that he is because I've been honoring him since the day I met him. I'm telling you, this little pretty girl right here, she's got some boldness in her. And, and, and here's the problem. People think, people think when, when they act honorable, then I can honor them. If they'll live in such a way where they deserve honor, then I can honor them. But church, there's a big difference between respect and honor. Do you want to know the difference? Respect is earned. Honor is given. Respect is earned. Honor is given. Honor is a posture of the heart. It's, it's a posture of the heart. And church, here's what's crazy. When you start to attach honor to somebody and you start treating somebody that, uh, special and you actually start treating them as weighty and you start treating them as precious and you start building them up and you start believing in them and you start encouraging them, let me tell you what will happen. They will start acting honorable. But church, on the other hand, when you're just assuming the worst and you're just tearing them down 
and, and you're belittling them and you're criticizing them and you're taking them out at the knees day after day after day, what will happen is they will just act more dishonorable. They'll act more dishonorable. Because honor builds up and dishonor tears down. So what are we going to do? How are we going to respond to this? I'm going to give you four things today that are in the Word of God. Four areas that, that, that the Word of God tells us that we need to honor. Are you ready for these? I'm going to give you four things that, that the Word of God doesn't say, if they're honorable, now you honor. No, the Word just says honor them. These four things. Number one, Number one, we honor God. We honor God. Everyone say honor God. honor God. Church, we honor God. Our creator, our sustainer, our El Shaddai, the God who is more than enough. He's our provider, the Holy One, the Redeemer, the Savior, our God. We honor God. Scripture gives us a lot of different ways that we can honor God. But one of the ways church that we can honor God and is, is in Proverbs chapter 3. Write this scripture down. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 9. You can look it up later. But Proverbs chapter 3 verse 9. Honor him with your wealth and with your first fruits. Church, everything that I have comes from God. Everything that I am comes from God. Everything that we are comes from God. So I'm going to honor God. I'm going to honor God with my first fruits, with the first tenth of whatever comes my direction, I'm going to honor God. Can somebody say amen to that? But church, we also show God honor with our bodies. We show God honor with our bodies. And that means that there are some places that we won't go. There are some places I just will not go. There are some places where I, that I just will not do. I just won't do it. There are some things that I just will not look at. Because I am called to be holy and set apart in my body. There's some things that I just won't do. Because I am going to honor God. I'm going to honor God. Church, another way you can honor God is you honor God with your worship. This is not lip service, church. This, is, this overflows out of the heart. Because of who he is and what he's done. I just got to worship him. I got to worship him because he is an amazing God. Because he's an amazing God. You honor him with worship. You honor him, church, just out of the, the goodness of God. He's a good God. Just the goodness of God. You honor the goodness of God. And actually, church, it's a pretty cool thing when you can honor the goodness of God in a culture that likes to make fun of God. We are living in a culture today that likes to make fun of God. But you know what? I'm going to honor God. I'm going to honor God. Secondly, we're not just told to honor God. We're told to honor our parents. Exodus 20, 12. Exodus 20, 12. Just write that scripture down. Look it up on your own. But I want to talk to every child in the house today, no matter what your age is. No matter what your age is. Because... Some of you just need to learn how to, and this is why it would have been cool to keep the teenagers in here today. But even some of us as adults have a hard time honoring our parents. And, and you might say, well, my parent isn't worth honoring. They don't deserve honoring. 
Again, there's a difference between respect and honor. We're told to honor our parents. Doesn't mean you have to agree with them. In fact, you know, as a, as a parent, I remember a, a few times my kids probably thought I wasn't very cool. You know, I, I, they probably didn't think I dressed very cool. They probably didn't think I looked very cool. And they probably didn't think I said very cool things. But I had to always remind myself, I'm not called to be their best friend. I am called to be a spiritual authority imparting life into them. Doesn't mean I don't want to be their best friend. But before I'm ever called to be their best friend, I'm called to be a spiritual authority. Teaching them and showing them the word of God. We need to teach our kids how to honor. We need to teach our kids. You know what, moms and dads, you really do need to teach your kids how to honor you at home. Because if you think for one minute they can't honor you at home, don't be fooled. They're not going to honor the world around them. A boss, people in authority. Are you hearing me? You know, one thing that I never did, because it wasn't the culture in Minnesota, but honestly, one thing that I always respected, I really respected this from... Because we grew up, not grew up, but we, we, we got licensed in the Church of God, which was in Tennessee, and we had a lot of relationships down south and all of that. And, and the kids that grew up down south, they, they were very, they were taught to say yes, ma'am, and no, sir. That's right. <laughs> and, and, and when I first heard a little kid this size, look at me and say, no, sir. Yes, ma'am. It wasn't like it was militant. It was honoring. Because they, it starts at an early age. And, you know, I, you, people are never too late to start. And so, hon, you need to start saying, you know, <laughs> yes, sir. No, ma'am. <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> But, um, but we need to learn to honor God. We need to learn to honor our parents. Number three, write this down. We need the third thing. We need to honor those in authority. Amen. That's right. Amen. Romans chapter 13, verses 1 through 7. Write that down. Again, look it up. Look it up sometime. It's, fun. it's, it's, it's good to have some homework. Okay? But church, Romans chapter 13, 1 through 7, you know, if I haven't gotten up into your business yet, um, I'm about to. Because there are people today that will say, I am not honoring the current administration of our government. I am not honoring the current administration. And then there are also people that will say, I am not honoring the past administration. You know, over my years of, you know, I'm sure there were times, but I can honestly say over the last 40 years of my ministry, I have liked, I have liked some things that our leaders uh, done and some things they didn't do. I have liked some leaders more than other leaders. I have disagreed with policies. I have disagreed with tone. I have disagreed with policy and tone. I, I, I've done that, but I can promise you, I dare you to look and find over the last 40 years of my leadership any time that I have dishonored a leader. You won't find it. You won't find it. 
doesn't matter what the administration is. Because I can disagree without dishonoring. You can disagree without dishonoring. There's a big difference. Can you say amen to that? Church, we're called to honor our leaders. We pray for them. I pray for the leaders that I voted for, and I pray for the leaders I didn't vote for. I pray for all leaders. Because it's the right thing to do. You know, you can look in the Old Testament. David was running uh, for his life from Saul. And Saul was trying to kill David. And yet he still honored Saul. Still honored him. In fact, I've never had a leader try and kill me. (laughs) You can disagree without being dishonorable. Can you say amen to that? Church, we can be better than that. we got to be real Christians. You can, be dis- you can disagree, but it doesn't mean that you dishonor. Can you say amen to that? And then number four, number four. Scripture also teaches that you honor your pastors and spiritual leaders. 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 17. Now, I don't want to make this sound self-serving. I really don't. I, I don't want to make this sound at all self-serving. But it does talk about in, in 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 17. You know, over the, over the course of 35 years that I've been pastoring, senior, senior pastor, I spent five years in youth ministry, and then the last 35 years I've been pastoring. And honestly, church, I can, I can honestly tell you that there were seasons in those 35 years where the church was very honoring. And I will tell you, this church was so so blessed. So blessed. Then there was a season that came where the church wasn't so honoring. And there were lots of different struggles that were going on. There's something about honoring leadership. And, and again, I don't want to make this sound self-serving. <clears throat> but church, it's not just the pastor that you honor. It, it's, it's, and, and it's not just, it, in, first, in first Timothy chapter 5, 17, it doesn't just say honor, it says show double honor. Double honor. And I'm talking about for campus pastors, I'm talking about for worship leaders. I'm talking about for the staff. I'm talking about for the kids that serve or or for the people who serve our kids' ministry. I'm talking about people that serve our youth ministry. I'm talking about all of it, double honor, double honor, double honor. I mean, I just thank God for the people that, the the, the individuals that invested into my, my kids. Tara and Tyler, as they were rising up, I just thank God and I honor those individuals that that spoke into their life. And now my six grandchildren, those that are speaking, while you're sitting here in church, there are those that are serving your, 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 your kids and your grandkids, and they deserve double honor. Double honor. Double honor. It's powerful. I've seen churches that honor, that were blessed, 
and I've seen churches that didn't honor. And it was one big struggle. One big struggle. Why does honoring mean so much? Why does it matter? It's not just God, <clears throat> right before God, but church, let me tell you, when you are dishonorable, it actually hurts you. It hurts you. It hurts me. When I show dishonor to a leader, when I show dishonor to <clears throat> my parents, when I show dishonor to my pastor, when, and I've got a pastor, when I show dishonor, it actually hurts me. When you show dishonor, it actually hurts you. And let me show you this. In Scripture, in Mark chapter 6, verse 4 and 5, going back to our text, when Jesus, you know, he, he was walking around uh, here and he said this, he said, the prophet is not without honor except in his hometown, among his relatives, and in his own home. Now look at verse 5. This is crazy. Look at verse 5. Church, this is crazy right here. Look at this. Jesus could not do any miracles. Jesus could not do any miracles there except lay his hands on a few sick people and heal them. Church, here's what's crazy. It doesn't say he would not. It says he could not. It does not say here that he would not lay hands. It says he could not. He could not. Church, we know before he could. He, he laid hands on a little girl that was dead, and she rose again. He laid hands on a woman with an issue of blood, and she was healed. But church, get this. Get the context here. There was a lack of faith, and there was a lack of honor. And he could not do any of the big miracles. Church, I don't fully understand this, and I'm not going to pretend like I do. But there is one thing that I know, and that is a lack of honor and a lack of faith can limit what Jesus wants to do in our lives. So church, here's a thought for you. I wonder what miracles... Jesus wants to do for you. I wonder what blessings Jesus wants to give to you. I wonder what prayers Jesus wants to answer for you. But he hasn't because of your lack of honor. Because of your lack of honor. Scripture says, honor one another above ourselves. Honor one another above ourselves. Church, how are we doing with that? How are we doing? Honor one another above ourselves. Another translation says it like this. This is awesome. Outdo one another in showing honor. Outdo. You outdo one another in showing honor. Everyone say outdo. Church, I want to outdo you in showing honor. Church, I promise you that if we go out for dinner... I will get the bill every time if it's possible. Any of you that know me know that 99.9% .9 of the time I will be super quick to get the bill because it's just one way 
for me to honor you. I can honor you just to do that. And that people, my good friends that know this, you know, they'll try and try and beat me to it. So then, so then I'll call a day ahead. I'll call the restaurant and I'll say, hey, you know, we're coming in. Here's my reservation in here. And, and, and I'm going to give you my card. And then people that, they'll, they'll try. And then the, I know somebody that went a week ahead. They went a week ahead to put the card down because they knew that I would. So then I bought the restaurant. Just kidding. Just kidding. But church, you want to honor, you want your marriage to be blessed. I just want to encourage you. What if you tried to outlove one another? What if you tried to outlove one another? What if you tried to out encourage one another? What if you tried to outgive one another? If you want your marriage blessed, what if you tried to out cherish and out esteem one another? Outdo one another in showing honor. Can I get an amen? amen. Can I get an amen? amen? Church, I've got the microphone, so I'm going to take just a couple seconds. And I want to honor a few people. I want to, first of all, honor all the mothers in this place, because I wasn't here on Mother's Day to honor you. But I want to honor all the mothers in this place this morning, because you moms make a huge sacrifice and you are amazing people and you make a, amazing sacrifices yeah they deserve honor and that that's beautiful and i just i just want to give them honor you know my my it was my mom's birthday yesterday and i just i just want to show honor to my mom uh who's in heaven now but i have a feeling she can hear me from time to time and I just honor mom because she was a social butterfly she gave me that gift I'm a social butterfly and I love it thanks mom for giving that to me and then I want to honor dad mom went to heaven seven months ago dad went to heaven about three years ago but I just honor dad because he showed me integrity and he showed me honesty and he instilled it in me at a young age. I'll always honor my dad for that. A man of integrity. And then I want to honor my bride. My best friend actually. Let me tell you guys something. Hon, your giving heart, your giving spirit, your godliness, your, your prayers... I mean, hours and hours and hours of prayers. She doesn't just pray at 9 o'clock in the morning on Sunday. Let me tell you, she's a praying lady. She's put up with me. She stood by me. She's held my hand. She's prayed me through the nights at times. And I can't describe how much I love you. you. I honor you. I want to honor my kids. My kids, you know, a lot of pastors' kids, they are not only not serving God, but they've gone the other direction totally. And I thank God for my kids. And I thank God that they understood that their dad is a pastor. Uh, had to share, they, they shared, I had to sh share them with literally over for the last 40 years with thousands of other people. And thank you. And then I want to just thank my leadership team. This leadership team is amazing. Uh, I got to share something with you that is amazing and absolutely stunning. I want you to understand that most of this leadership team that you see here have been with me for nearly decades. 
Jeff next month will be with me for 30 years, three decades. It's unheard of. Three decades. Um, Sarah, she upstairs probably. Uh, you know, she was just a little tight, you know, but it, it's, you know, a lot of kids as they kept growing, 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 they, they moved on and whatever, and she's still here 30 decades. She's been here 30 decades. I mean, 30 years, 30 years, three decades. Um, Jordan, Jordan, thank you. Jordan has been with me nearly two decades. Um, he's going on like 15, 16 years. And that's unheard of. And any one of these leaders could have made more money somewhere else, could have been doing something different, but I thank God for their time. And I honor you. I honor you. Thank you. I want to honor my pastor. Uh, he taught me the word of God. He taught me how to preach. He gave me a chance to do what was in my heart. He believed in me. He encouraged me. And I just honor my pastor, Randy and Kathy Hammond. They're dear to my hearts. I honor our first responders who run in when everyone else is running out. Our first responders. Any of you that are first responders, just stand up right now real quick. If you are a first responder in any way, police, uh, fire, uh, nurses, um, any of that, first responders, um, God bless you. We just thank you. God bless you. It's a big deal. God bless you. I honor you. In church, I honor you, our church. I honor you, our church. You are the best. You, I, I mean, like I said, been in, I've been leading for 35 years, pastoring. And you are set apart. You are courageous. Um, you're one of the most faith-filled, passionate, bet the the... You know, the farm risk takers um, that I could have ever led. 27 years. Um, we, have, we have done so much. We have accomplished so much as this ministry. We have stepped out of the boat. We did the nightmare, the thriller, the frozen. Uh, Scrooge power team has been here. We've had professional wrestling in this church. Uh, and it was all about reaching souls. Everything we've done like that was all about reaching souls. And a lot of people would have put on the brakes, but you guys said, let's bring it on. Let's bring it on. Let's just, let's just do it. Let's make a difference. And it, it was amazing. You know, 14 years ago, we launched our second campus in Owatonna. Can you believe it's been 14 years? I know, it, it, it's like time flies, 14 years. Uh, our women's conferences, our youth conferences, our kids' crusades, our mission trips, all of it. Church, we've blessed our city. When I said, uh, let's give it away, you raised the money and we gave it away. When I said, let's give it away, let's do something huge for our city, you helped me raise the money and we gave it away and we touched our city. I honor you as a church. I honor you as a church. Some of you have been with me for those 35 years. Stand up right now, because I just know you are. Uh, Molzoffs, Kleiners, Kinvalls, Bob Nelson, um, uh, Kathy, yeah, Joe. Some of you have been with me for 35 years. I honor you. I honor you. I honor you. But it's not just you that I honor. It's not just you. I honor any of you that have been a part of, of what God's been doing. I honor you. You know, but above all, I honor Jesus. Amen. Above all, I honor Jesus, my Savior, my Redeemer, my King, my Lord. He's forgiven me. He's healed me. He's touched me. You know, I said I was going to be done before 1130, but I apologize. I, I just had so much in my heart today to share, and I think this was one of those important messages that we had to get 
into our heart and into our spirit. Um, church, there's something about honor. And it's all in the name. It's because of Jesus Christ. I don't, I don't honor people because I agree with them. I honor people because they deserve it. You know why they deserve it? Because Jesus Christ has made a difference in every single one of our lives. And he can make a difference in every single one of our lives. And because of him, I honor all people. Even the people I don't agree with, I will show honor to. Just food for thought. I'm going to end with this story. A lot of you have heard of the amazing uh, baseball player Babe Ruth. Babe Ruth signed literally thousands of baseballs. But Babe Ruth only signed seven home run bats. One of the greatest home run hitters ever. But he only signed seven home run bats. There was a a bat that was missing for the longest time. Nobody knew where it was. And there was a man on his deathbed and he didn't have anybody left in his life. He didn't have any children. He didn't have any and he was in a nursing home and the nurse that took care of him she took such good care of him and she honored him so much that before he died, he gave her one of Babe Ruth's seven home run bats. She didn't know what it meant. She, she thanked him and she went home and put it under her bed. When the lady retired, Mar Marcella, I believe her name was her, but when she retired, she went and took that, uh, she wanted to open up a restaurant, but she didn't have the money to open up the restaurant. So she thought to herself, I wonder what that bat is worth. So she went under that bed after 18 years, pulled it out from under her bed, and took it to this place, I don't know, some place that you take it to to find out what this bat is worth. So she took it to this place, and the guy looked at it and thought, could it be? Could it really be? And he looked at it, and he said, this is an original, genuine, signed Babe Ruth bat. And she took that bat, and she sold it for $1,300,000. $1.3 $1 million. Church, she went, and she bought herself a restaurant. And then she took the rest of the money and she uh, donated that money to a foundation that was really important to Babe Ruth. And the media was like, why would you do that? Why would you do that? And here's what she said. She said, that bat was only valuable because Babe Ruth's name was on it. Since he made it valuable, the only reasonable thing that I could do was something that would honor his life. Church, what is it that makes you valuable? What is it that makes me valuable? You know what it is? J-E-S-U-S. -S, Jesus. Those online chat, put in the chat, Jesus. Because of his name, and his name is upon you, you're not ordinary. Because his name is upon you, 
You're not common. You're extraordinary. You're beautiful. I honor every one of you. I hope honor has been lifted up in your eyes. And you don't have that thought anymore. Oh, I will honor them when they become honorable. No. You honor them right now. We honor up. We honor down. And we honor all around. We want to give you the opportunity to accept Jesus into your heart as your Lord and Savior. If you want to make that choice and have that assurance that you're saved and going to heaven, repeat this prayer after me. Father God, thank you for sending your son Jesus to be the perfect and final sacrifice for all my sins. Today I choose to live for you. Forgive me of my sins. Make me righteous. I confess you as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you said that prayer for the first time, we'd love to send you a free gift all about your choice to follow Jesus. Simply email us at the link below with your email address. It's time now to give in our tithes and offerings. We want to thank you for your continued faithfulness in your giving. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 9 verse 10 that God provides seed to the sower. Keep sowing that seed and God will keep providing seed to sow. There are four ways that you can give. You can give online through our website. You can give through texting on your phone. You can give through our Destiny app and set it up to be automated. And you can give by mail. Thanks again for your generosity. We pray that God bless it and multiply it. In Jesus' name, amen.